Hello, this is Your Evil Twin, welcoming you back to Let's Play Quantum Break. Oh, you Jack Joyce. Where is he? Where's my brother? They're taking him to the library. You might still be able to catch them. Why are you helping me? You're with them. It's more complicated than... Look, I don't know if you can make it, but you should hurry. That's the first time you saw Beth Wilder. Yeah, but definitely not the first time she saw me. Will. Will! That's interesting. It appears we have an ally amongst Monarch's security forces. Meeting her gets us the story achievement, Mysterious Stranger. Although it won't unlock until we're in the next scene. No time to lose. I gotta get to Will. Jack's time sense is tingling. That means there's some kind of temporal anomaly here. If we use time vision... It's supposed to take William, William Joyce alive, alive if he doesn't put up a fight. fight. Please, please, let me go! Let me go. I can I shut can the shut hell up. Hell up. Look, just shut just the shut fuck the up, up, all right? right? The boss the said to take him to, to the library. Wants to deal, wants to with, deal with this with one first. first. Oops. <gasps> fuck! We accidentally time dodged into that trooper. Now we have to do it again to dodge his bullet. <sighs> shit, shit. Oh, shit. Time dodge lets Jack change position in the blink of an eye. And if you dodge and then hit the aim button, you get one second of slow motion, called focus time. The red screen means Jack's nearly dead. Better hide to let his health recover. Except hiding causes the enemies to throw grenades. Wow, this place is getting trashed. And it's not just the bullets and grenades. There's a powerful distortion wave whenever Jack time dodges. And a smaller one when you create a time stop bubble. And when the bubble collapses as well. Oh, he was throwing a grenade. What's great is when you run out of one time power, you can still use another. Each power has its own energy meter. The cooldown timer is on the right side of the screen. Right, let's try and time dodge into an enemy. The shockwave knocks him back. Gotta get to the library. That's where they're taking him. Look at the carnage in here. Those scorch marks are from stacking bullets in time stop bubbles. As I mentioned last time, firing several bullets into a time bubble supercharges the amount of damage they do. Gotta keep moving, Jack. Now, if we skip back in time to the start of that fight, we can take a better look at what actually happens when Jack does a time dodge. We can see here that the world curves around Jack, a distortion that warps the floor and the ceiling, and that also warps the two monarch troopers. Presumably that's just an optical illusion, it doesn't actually deform the scenery and twist enemies into weird shapes, that would be lethal. But the time warp can knock over enemies, break destructible scenery and send small objects flying. Let's rewind that. I'm using a program called Hattiwati's Cinematic Tools to pause time and to take control of the game's camera, so we can fly around and see things from unusual angles, to notice details that are normally hard to spot. We can see a shockwave spreading in all directions, but the most powerful distortion travels with Jack, creating a bowl-shaped depression under his feet, while right outside the bowl, the floor and the rest of the scenery curves up like a hill. This makes me think that it is similar to Star Trek's warp drive, expanding space behind the Enterprise and contracting it in front. Similarly, Jack zooms across the room by stretching and squashing time and space. Jack only takes a couple of steps, but the distortion stretches those steps across a longer distance. In fact, he doesn't even run the whole way. 
for part of it he slides across the floor as if he's skating or surfing, propelled by the time warp itself. He rides a wave of curved space. At the end of Jack's dodge, the time warp collapses, and the smooth, circular distortion shatters into hundreds of prisms and fractals. It's during this moment, when the time warp collapses, that there is a second of focus time for slow motion aiming. Let's get back to Jack chasing after his brother. It's easy to miss, but there's another time echo here. Makes sense. Makes sense. Dragging this asshole, this asshole to the library? To the library? Airlift's, Airlift's already initiated. Initi it should be gone by now. Airlift. Airlift. The time machine. You taking the time, time machine? Hey, hey. I said, I said no talk. 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 What's that noise? Vroom, vroom, vroom. Well, more like, what's that red pulsing dome of energy? We didn't see that earlier. That's the physics building and the campus courtyard. We walked through there. You still had no idea that Wilder was helping you? She wasn't the only one. If we look back, yep, all the power's out. Complete blackout. <sighs> Nothing. Lights are out across the whole damn campus. Somebody cut the power. This was supposed to be a quiet operation. We got what we came for. Yeah. Let's see the media shitstorm that follows us. Hey! It's all being taken care of! You heard the big guy. Contingency plan is in effect. We finish what we started, and we reconvene at the dry docks. Simple as that. We got problems? Nope. We could only hear that conversation by sneaking to some cover and hiding. If we'd stayed standing in the open, it would only have taken them a couple of seconds to spot Jack of their helmet lights. I <laughs> knocked him over the railing. And killed that guard of the time focus slow motion at the end of time dodge. And another. Oh, they've got the lights back on. Of course, one of Jack's powers is regenerating health. When Jack is wounded, his injuries and his clothes repair themselves. They rewind in time. No one in the game actually mentions it. But it does come up in the novel, Quantum Break Zero State. It's actually a plot point. Someone shoots Jack in the knee and thinks he'll be unable to walk. He underestimates him. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, I've got two possible routes down there. If we now go back and take the other stairs, hopefully we can trick the enemies. Yes, they're all facing the wrong way. Oh, except <laughs> they're actually backing up here. Messed up that time dodge. <laughs> and now we're out of time dodge energy. We use time stop bubbles instead. But uh, now we don't have enough energy for another time bubble. There's a new weapon on this lower level. A replacement for the pistol. It's the heavy pistol. Based on the FN57 which fires bullets designed to be better at penetrating body armour. Like the normal pistol, we get infinite ammo for it, but we have to reload after every four shots, even though a real FN57 has a 20 round magazine. That's to balance the huge amount of damage it does. A headshot goes right through their helmets, and it only takes three body shots to kill these armoured troopers. Slow motion headshot. 
Yes! Oh, that fight was so much fun. Okay, gotta get to the library. In fact, before the game auto saves, I'd like to do all that all over again. Let's not bother hiding this time. Lights are out across the whole damn campus. Somebody cut the power. Weapons it's free! Choice. Engage! Oh, what? Yes! Got both of them! Haha, <laughs> and they were both railing kills. I'm glad I went with the submachine gun rather than the assault rifle for this bit. The SMG is inaccurate, but I love being able to spray so many bullets. Whoop, messed up a time dodge again. It's basically Jack's equivalent of Max Payne's bullet time shoot dodges. Except rather than diving in slow motion, he just walks across the space in the direction he's dodging. During the first couple of fights, we needed to take cover and shoot from a distance. But now that we have time dodge, we can warp all over the place and be much more aggressive. Ha! Crutch shot! Got him in the dick! Huh, Jack didn't comment on that this time. Last time he heard that, he said, I will. We went down those stairs last time, so let's go down here instead. Let's grab that heavy pistol. Who is that guy? Yes! Ha! Grabbed the gun from in front of him, dodged away, and then shot him with it! Wow, look at those dinner trays floating. Creating a time bubble makes a shockwave that knocks things around. And then those things caught at the edge of the bubble move in slow motion. The plates are floating! I guess that means the slow motion kill cam when you kill a last enemy isn't just a camera trick, it's caused by Jack's powers. Okay, gotta get to the library. Or maybe the game turns down gravity during slow motion kill cams, so that enemies and objects will fly further, for more impressive ragdoll physics. Could be explained by Jack's powers though. Why are you taking me here? It's a library. I need to return some fucking books. HQ, we've got William Joyce in the library. Awaiting orders. Over. Will. They took him to the library. I gotta find a way in. I gotta get to him fast. There's gotta be another way in. I think that's anti-climb wire at the top of that fence and gate. And that red light is a projector set up by the protesters. It's shining the words, save the library, on the front of that building. Where did that come from? Yellow is one of the main colours in Quantum Break's colour scheme. So when something in the environment is yellow, it often means go here, or look at this, or this is something you can climb on. Looks like I'm not the only one with a grudge. Yeah, Jack didn't kill these troops. Now, here's the one and only narrative object for this part. Well, here I thought it was going to be a quiet night. But it sounds like things have taken a real bad turn down at the anti-monarch protest at Riverport University. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I've just heard about security personnel in the employee of Monarch Solutions detaining students. And some reports of gunfire. Now. I don't want to jump the gun here, this is unconfirmed, and obviously I don't know the details, but no matter how you slice it, it sounds like a bad scene. You know I'm not a big fan of Monarch or how they do things, but at the same time, I hope nobody's going overboard with this protest thing. It's just a goddamn building, people. It ain't worth anybody getting shot over. Although, if they are shooting people over, that's some heinous bullshit right there. Either way, I got a feeling this is gonna get a whole this yellow tarpaulin is a clue that we can climb on here. 
looks like a way up. Come on, I don't have time for this. Uh, shouldn't a scissor lift only lower if you press the controls? Gotta slow that thing down somehow. It's shoddy workmanship from a cheap supplier. They should have got one from Monarch Solutions. Their products are very reliable. Now, I think Time Stop is the power for this situation. <laughs> Nailed it. going on around here. It's funny that Jack looks at his hand, as if he needs to make sure that he didn't do it somehow. HQ, we've got William Joyce in the library. Awaiting orders. They got him. Over. I wonder where the Monarch brother is. The skeleton crew and wait for arrival of Monarch Actual. Everybody else needs to reunite at the Dry Docks Cronin Extraction Grounds. Wait for further orders. The library is ready to blow. Now? We need to be a bit careful here, because these two guards up ahead are more dangerous than they look. They're armed with heavy pistols. Enemy spotted! <laughs> we are playing in hard mode which means those heavy pistols can kill Jack in just three or four shots. It's especially bad news if both guards shoot Jack at the same time. Edward Norton Lorenz Memorial Library. He was a weather scientist and one of the creators of chaos theory. He came up with the idea of the butterfly effect. Why are you taking me here? It's a library. I need to return some fucking books. HQ, we've got William Joyce in the library. Awaiting orders. Over. Edward Lorenz died in 2008, so this library hasn't been a memorial to him for very long. Jack, run! Jack now has the power to create a time shield that will deflect bullets. It means that if Jack is injured, we don't have to hide in cover and wait for his health to regenerate. We can create cover anywhere, out in the open. <laughs> Masonry just got knocked off. And just like time dodge, time shield can knock enemies back and stagger them. Let's grab this assault rifle. It's better for long range shooting in a big room like this. Time dodge knocked another piece of that pillar. There are lots of explosive canisters. I guess they're part of the demolition equipment. And with time vision, we can see when enemies are getting close to them. Even when they're behind a pillar. Jack's shield energy is nearly recovered. Handily, Jack can shoot through his own shield. It's also nice that you can knock enemies over by dodging near to them. You don't have to actually ram into them. Will, you all right? You're fine, all right. You're fine. Now let's have some fun banter between Jack and Will. We have to hurry. Where's my car? I didn't like the color. Let's get a new one. What? No, Jack. I need them. 
I think those are shotgun blasts. Hold that thought. My briefcase was in that car. I'll take you shopping. It's a fucking briefcase. A briefcase that contains something I need in order to stop the fracture. There's the guard with the shotgun. You didn't think to spell that out to me before. A little busy getting kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not too late to leave you here. How the hell are you staying alive? That's part of the messed up shit I need to explain. You got any theories about being able to manipulate time? No. It's time to come up with one. Jack and Will keep chatting with each other, as long as we stay up here and guard him. We could run down the stairs and fight the enemies down there, but that means missing out on most of these conversations. Oh! Time shield power is only half full. We killed someone with a shotgun a minute ago. I wonder where that shotgun went. Aha! Here it is! A semi-auto shotgun. Yes! That was satisfying. Is that all of them? Yeah, I think so. We have to get to my briefcase. Then we find Beth Wilder. Why? Who is she? She knows about the fracture. I trust her. Glad you trusted somebody. It's not that simple, Jack. I kept secrets from you to keep you safe. Safe? Look around you, Will. Does this feel safe to you? This isn't my fault. Beth warned me this would happen. I did everything in my power to stop it. But you never told me any of this. I couldn't just... How long have you known? We don't have time for this now, Jack. We have to get to that briefcase. So, Will is going to be the genius that takes care of the science and comes up with the plans. Let's move before more of them show up. While Jack will handle the shooting and the grunt work. That should be a winning combination. Jack! Paul? Jack, we gotta go. Hold on. What are you doing? Only what's necessary. Think about this. You don't know what's at stake. I know exactly what's at stake. That's why I'm here. You believe you can stop what's coming? I'm giving you one chance to change your mind. This path, it's already said it can't be changed. The past, the future, <sighs> I've seen it. I've lived it. For 17 years. 17 years. It was you, the first experiment. Come with me and we can see this through. Or hold on to your hope and burn with it. Now listen, I built a device. I can stop this. I can. You can't. This is madness. There's no harm in trying. There is. That's why I can't risk you opposing me, Will. It doesn't have to end like this. We can't just let this happen. I'll never stop trying. It took me years to come to terms with what must be done. But we don't have years. Wait, wait. Trigger. I never wanted this. That's the end of Act 1, and gets us the achievement, hold on to your hope and burn. And that's the choice that Paul gave Will. He said, come with me and we can see this through, or hold on to your hope and burn with it. 
Will said that he had a way of fixing time, that he could stop this, but Paul was sure that Will couldn't. And when Will tried to argue that there's no harm in trying, Paul said that there is, that somehow that would make things worse, that Paul couldn't risk Will opposing him. So Paul murdered him. He murdered Will, Jack's brother. He killed his best friend's brother. Jack and Paul were friends ever since childhood. The conversations and emails in the first part of the game told us they got up to all kinds of adventures and shenanigans together. And they stayed in touch even when Jack was on the other side of the world. When Paul was in a crisis and needed help, Jack got on a plane and flew home to help him, without even knowing what it was about. But after Paul took a trip in the time machine, he's come back with time powers just like Jack, in fact even more powerful than Jack. And he's working with Monarch Solutions. Paul Serene seemed to be in charge of the Monarch security forces. That's how Monarch knew about the experiment happening, and that Jack Joyce and William Joyce would be there. Paul is the reason that the Monarch troops knew their names and were coming after them. What could possibly have happened to Paul? What has he seen? What has he lived through that would make him turn against Jack and Will? In the next part of Let's Play Quantum Break, we will be playing the first junction point in the game. That's where instead of playing as Jack Joyce, we will be playing as Paul Serene. Paul will have an important choice to make, and you, the viewers, will get to decide which option Paul chooses, so that is going to be very cool. In the meantime, remember that there are other decisions you can make, such as deciding to like this video on YouTube, leaving a comment, subscribing to my channel, or even supporting me on Patreon if you're a big fan of my videos and you'd like to help me out. A huge thank you to those of you that have already become patrons and have been supporting my work. Also, if you'd like to talk more about Quantum Break or the Let's Play somewhere other than the YouTube comments, I've got forum threads on both the Something Awful forums and the Let's Play Zone forums. The Something Awful forums is the place where Let's Plays were originally invented over a decade ago, and they've got a huge community of people making and watching high quality Let's Plays. I know that many of my long term fans are Something Awful goons. However, it does cost a little bit of money to register an account on the Something Awful forums. On the other hand, there is the Let's Play Zone, a newer forum which is free to join. I think they've only been around for about a year, so they're not quite as big. But there's some people making great Let's Plays there as well, and there's loads of cool people, it's a really nice community. Or of course, you can discuss stuff in the YouTube comments. It's all good. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join me next time! <laughs>